What a joy it is to be able to share a few thoughts from the Word of God. This morning, what we are going to do is, we are going to look at the life of Samuel from the first chapter down to the 15th chapter of the first book of Samuel. Honestly speaking, I have been looking at the life of Samuel as a prophet, as a priest, as a judge, as the leaders of the people of Israelite. But when you study the book of 1 Samuel, beginning from 1st chapter down to the 15th chapter, you will realize one thing. Samuel was not just a priest. He was not just a judge. He was not just a prophet. He was not just a leader. But he was also a man of prayer who was in constant touch with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are all familiar with the story of how Samuel was born into this world. It was through his faithful mother Hannah's prayer that Samuel was born. Hannah would go to the temple, he would cry out to the Lord asking to bless her with a child and God bless her with a baby boy and she named her Samuel. And later, Samuel was dedicated to the temple for the service of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. When we come to the third chapter, the Bible records the first prayer of Samuel. Samuel was confused when his name was called out. He would run to prophet Eli saying, My Lord, I am here. What do you want me to do? Eli later realized that it was not him who is calling Samuel, but it was God who is actually calling Samuel. So he advised Samuel what to say when his name is being called out again. When his name Samuel was called out by God through the advice of prophet Eli, Samuel responded and saying, My God, I am here. Speak unto me. I am ready to listen. Samuel said, Speak unto me. I am here, ready to listen. Most of the mistake as the leaders of the church and leaders of the community that we make is we want others to listen and we want to speak. Many a time we come to the Lord wanting Him to listen to our story and we do not have time to listen to God. Samuel as a child and future leaders of the people of Israelite said unto God, I am here ready to listen. What do you want to say? That should be the attitude of Christian leaders today. We spend too much time speaking, trying to convince others. And we spend less time to listen to God of what He wants to tell us. This morning, let us come before the Lord once again and ask Him to speak unto us, unto us that we can listen to Him. And when we come to the seventh chapter, Prophet Samuel, as a man of prayer, led his people into confession through fasting and prayer. Samuel, being a man of God and being a man of prayer, he realized the need of the people of Israelite to humble themselves in fasting and prayer. So he assembled all of them at a place called Mitzpah and said, We need to confess our sin. Come before the Lord in prayer. Today, as the leaders of a church, we need to be a man of prayer. And as a man of prayer, we need to lift our people into fasting and prayer, humbling ourselves before God. Samuel, as a man of God, assembled the people of Israelite, humbling themselves before the Lord in fasting and prayer. And when we go down to the seventh chapter of the ninth verse, you will realize that when the Palestine heard that they were gathered at a place called Mitzvah, they were ready to attack. 
when the enemies were ready to attack the people of Israelite, Samuel ran to the Lord in prayer for protection. Many a time we come up with a better strategy to tackle the false prophecy invading our search. Many a time we try to come up with a better strategy to defend ourselves from the temptation of the devil. But we forgot one thing and that is we have to come before the Lord who is the master of defender. Samuel, instead of coming with a strategy to defend himself and his people from the attack of the Palestinian, Prophet Samuel went to the Lord in prayer asking for God's protection. Today, as the leaders of our church, we need to go to the Lord in prayer to protect our people from false prophecy, from the devil invading a church. Many of the pastors, many of the leaders, many of the evangelists fail to do this. Let us come before the Lord asking for His protection. And when we come to the 12th chapter, we will realize that Samuel was giving his farewell speech. And as he was giving a farewell speech, Samuel said, As for me, far it be from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. Samuel was saying, It would be a great sin against the Lord if I ignore praying for you. Samuel was saying, I would be praying for you all the time. I won't stop praying for you it will be a sin if I don't pray for all of you. Samuel was a man of prayer. He prays for himself and he prayed for his people since the beginning of his ministry till the end of his ministry. Here, what we need to think is it is not the amount of prayer, amount of sermon that we preach which really count. It is not the amount of sermon that we preach which really count, but it is the amount of time that we spend in prayer for our people that really counts. It is good that we prepare our sermon well and preach to the people, but how many are did you spend time to bless that sermon is really important. We need to ponder on this. Every Sunday we come up on a pulpit, we preach the word of God. And people say, our sermon is effective. Our sermon is so good that we want to listen to it again and again. But the question is, how many times did you spend in prayer for that sermon to bless the people? Let us ask ourselves, when was the last time that you shed tears for your people as a leader of the church? When was the last time that you cried and prayed for your people as the leaders of your community? I'm encouraged and inspired by one of the pastors from Kolkata. He would send his thought every morning and also twice a week he will send a message saying we are in a time of fasting and prayer kindly share your prayer point so that i can pray for you a pastor from kolkata taking advantage of lockdown and pandemic went to the lord in prayer all the time went to the Lord in prayer every day and he would spend time humbling himself before the Lord in fasting and prayer twice a week praying for his people. Today as a pastor, as an evangelist, as leaders of a community, how many times 
did you spend in prayer throughout this lockdown since last year? It is time for us to spend time in prayer, asking to bless the wayward member of our church. And when we start spending more time in prayer, our sermon, our counseling, our teaching, our preaching will be more effective than before. I urge our fellow bad brethren, as a child of God, don't ignore prayer. The Bible commands us to pray without ceasing. We need to be in spirit of prayer all the time. May God bless you.